Good morning. This is the most fun part of the keynote. This is where we're going to look at the product. This is where we're going to run some demos. This is where we're going to have some blast. So, uh, you know, we've been releasing Power BI like clockwork. Every week, a new service release. Every month, a new Power BI desktop. There's a new service release today. There's a new desktop available today, and some of you have found it over the weekend as well, I know. Uh, lots of features. We're not going to talk about those at all, because you can just try it. You can read the blog. You, can't, you didn't come to Seattle for that. What we're going to do instead, we're going to look at what is coming down the pipeline in the next few months. We actually pulled the bits from the developers' machines, so it's work in progress. It's not everything we're doing, but the things we can already show. So it's going to be kind of a glimpse into the future. It's going to be super cool. And we're going to start with the topic of embedding Power BI into applications. Today, we're announcing that we have a new set of offerings in Power BI Premium. It's called EM1 and EM2, and they're designed to allow people to embed Power BI into their applications. They start at $625 per month, which is very, very low, yes? Yes, and, and it's not just for ISVs. I know some of you are thinking, wow, it's just for ISVs. These are the guys that, that are going to build those Power BI embedded applications, and we do have about almost 2,000 ISVs using Power BI to build their applications, but it's also something for you. Because these, these new SKUs, these EM1 and EM2, have the same kind of capability that you can distribute to everybody without having to license them on a per user basis. And you don't have to write the application yourself. If you have an application that allows you to embed dynamic content in it, you can use those SKUs with it. So let's take a look at one that I know many of you care about. Let's move to the demo machine. SharePoint. You can go and embed into SharePoint your Power BI reports they are fully dynamic, they're fully available. If I don't have a timeout, okay, let's, let's, um, uh, there we go, it's going to come. There we go, now it's fully available, fully dynamic, you can do the regular slicing and dicing and distribute to everybody if you use these Power BI premium SKUs, including the EM1 and EM2. And it doesn't have to stop at SharePoint. You can go here to one of the two coolest Microsoft products that we released re recently. These are Microsoft Teams. This is a new collaboration product that allows you to collaborate with team members using channels. And if you want to add Power BI reports into it, all you have to do is just go to the channel, add a new tab to the channel, pick Power BI, you know, pick one of the workspaces that you want to work with. Let's go with some uh, travel information. So I'm going to go here and find a travel demo, pick one of those reports, save it, and just like that, I have a Power BI report embedded into, Power, into Microsoft Teams, so easy, including all the custom controls, fully interactive, available for you. That's how easy it is to go and embed Power BI reports into any product that allows this dynamic content, just like SharePoint and Teams here. But when we're working about embedding, we're thinking about it in a two-directional di way. It's not just how Power BI embedded is showing up in other applications, but how other applications is, are integrated into Power BI. So let's show you some things that we're working on. I'm going to start here with a nice, uh, nice dashboard. This one, I, you already know. We can embed Excel content in Power BI. It's a first class uh, type of uh, information that we deal with the dashboard. So these are all dashboards coming directly from Excel. As by the way, Excel now has this co-authoring uh, co directly on the desktop, super cool. But what I want to go here is show you a report that I started building. And imagine that I'm a company that is, that is uh, generating some quotes for its customers, and we want to track this quote generation process. So I'm going to go and, and try to diagnose what's going on here. I'm going to edit the report, and I'm going to go and take the, I'm going to take the average end-to-end -end quote time. I'm going to put it as a color saturation on my chart. So what you see here, these are my top customers with the amount of business that I'm working with them. And generally, they're mostly green. I don't know how many of you tried the color saturation, super cool. Uh, but uh, you can see mostly green, and one of them is kind of red. And you can see that uh, you know, we have some problem. So when I'm looking at Lucerne, we have about four days to produce a quote. But I'm looking at Pernell here, the fourth largest customer. It takes almost two and a half weeks to produce one quote. And we can start doing slicing and dicing, trying to diagnose. And you can see here, these are the process uh, steps for producing a quote. But it's kind of hard to see what's going on when when I'm using just a table. There must be a better way to visualize such a process. And there is a tool that allows us to look at such uh, process visualizations. This is a visual diagram of that pro quote, uh, quote 
uh, producing process. And you can see all the steps of producing a quote. And what I can do now is take that diagram, I'm going to copy it, the, the URL, I'm going to back, go back to my report, and I want to replace this table, that doesn't give me too much information, with a new control, it's the visual diagram control. I'm going to put, paste in the visual diagram URL, press enter, and just like that, the Visio diagram is showing up inside my Power BI report. Yeah, it's cool, huh? <laughs> and notice how, notice how the data was automatically mapped from my data set in, the, in Power BI into the, into the IDs of the process steps in Visio. It didn't do a perfect job. You can see here the sales queue here is still gray, hasn't been mapped, so I can correct it. I can go to mapping here, I can choose the sales quote here. And then I can go and map it to, to one of my uh, steps. Let's go and map it to leads and opportunities. And now it's colored, it's ready to go. So I can go in and, and now I can go and, and start diagnosing. So let's take a look. Lucerne Publishing, cross-highlighting, generally mostly green, a little bit of uh, orangey, but overall pretty good. Uh, Litware here, still looking good, but I'm going to Purnell. That's one that has a red, let's see where it is. You can see you know, quite a few steps that are giving me a hard time here. And I may want to do something about it. So at this point, I may try to diagnose further. I can see that in the, in the tooltip that you know, all the top ones have this uh, first least query priority says prioritize for field sales uh, team. And it has this kind of uh, prioritize treatment in all my quote producing process. But Pernell just have a normal priority. And maybe that's the issue. I need to change the priority for Pernell. Now, what I've done here, I created the Power App application that allows me to go and change the information for uh, the various customers in their customer record. But moving between applications, kind of not a lot of fun. You have to remember the customer ID and so forth. We can do better. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to copy this application ID of that Power application. And I'm going to go back to my report. And I'm going to insert a Power App control in it, into it. And I'm going to bind it to the customer ID. And I'm going to put the application ID into it and submit. Now what's happening here, this control is going to go and connect directly to Power Apps. And I can see Power Apps now showing directly inside Power BI. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I can go in and look at Lucerne Publishing, or I can look at Litware, and you can see everything changes. The visual diagram changes, the customer record from Power, from, uh, Power Apps is changing. I can now go, now go to Purnell here, and I can see that the lead scoring priority is low. I'm going to change it into priority, high priority. I'm going to change the eligible for automatic approval to be available. I'm going to submit, and I just change the data directly from within the report. And you know how we call it? When you can change the data from within the report? How do we call it, Marco? We have write back. We, we have write back now in Power BI. You can go and it's a really, really high quality write back. By combining this Power Apps and Power BI, we can now have any kind of application when you need this closed loop analysis, this actionable BI now available. That's super, super cool. Thank you. Now, We've been releasing this Power BI desktop every month. And how many of you have been using Power BI desktop? Yeah, I can see sea of hands here. This has been amazing, amazing success. You know, the reception of the community, the, the enthusiasm of the community around the Power BI desktop has been stunning. This is a product that, you know, other competitors will charge sometimes thousands of dollars for, and we are just giving it away for free because we believe that everybody should experience the data. Everybody should be able to create content. And, uh, and we have some really cool stuff coming in the Power BI desktop. So I want to show you, and I want to help, get some help here. I'm going to invite Kim Manis, the group program manager for the Power BI desktop. He's going to join us, and she's going to show you some of the things that we are working on directly from the developer's machine. What do we have there, Kim? So here at Power BI, we love our community. And I wanted to kick it off by showing some of the ways the community is really helping us innovate month over month over month. Um, so today is all about movies. Uh, we have this table here showing the top 100 movies uh, by Worldwide Gross. And at the end of the table, you can see here I have this IMDb score. Um, so it's a number from 0 to 10. It doesn't really pop out at you yet. Um, so we're going to do something to make this one look a little bit better. So I'm going to jump over here to Quick Measures. Uh, quick Measures is a new feature we added a few months ago. This allows you to take 
complex DAX expressions and really just apply them in, with a click of a button, uh, no DAX needed, no programming needed. Um, so the reason I'm showing you this is uh, we have a new quick measure called star rating. So this quick measure was actually written by uh, Chris Webb, an MVP in our community. So he went out and wrote the DAX and figured out how to translate a number from 0 to 10 into a Unicode star rating. So we're going to go ahead and apply this to our table. It's a number from 0 to 10. Click OK. And right there, you can see now the numbers really jump out at you. We can remove the, the first number. So now this is just a super visual way to see those numbers. Now, this is really cool because it was really created by Chris. Chris posted this formula, this DAX formula, into our quick measures gallery on our website. And we picked up that measure. And now Chris Webb's name is showing up inside Power BI. And you can have your name showing up inside Power BI <laughs> as well. Yeah, all you have to do is just post this kind of your own favorite problem-solving DAX formula, post into the gallery. We'll pick it up. We'll put your name into the product. You'll make your mother proud. You'll have a new pickup line for the bar. You know, it's all sorts of things like that. You know, so it's really, really cool, yep. right? Yep. What else do we have there? All right. So this table looks all right, uh, but I think we can make it a little bit better. So sometimes you really need colors and visuals to really have trends pop out at you. So we're going to jump back into this table and look at estimated budget. And here we're going to apply a new type of conditional formatting called data bars. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this one. And immediately it jumps out at you that of our top 10 here, Avengers was the most expensive movie to film. So in case you didn't see that, um, I'm going to do it one more time. One We're going to show data bars one more time here. Uh, and this is actually available today in Power BI Desktop if you go ahead and download it right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, isn't it just amazing how this table that we just used to be just a table, now with a star rating and this data bar just look so cool? Yep. You can actually use a bunch of formatting options with data bars to remove the, the numbers and kind of make this look a lot like small multiples. Yes. And again, these are all fully interactive. Our table and matrix can cross-highlight and drill. Um, so just new ways to really visualize data in your tables. And this is available today. That's, super cool. That's the only thing we don't have available today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, cool. So the other way we've been able to innovate so quickly uh, is around visuals with the help of our community. Our custom, custom visuals gallery has over 80 visuals up there created by partners and by customers. Uh, you can visualize pretty much anything you want. Um, in the past, it's been a little cumbersome to go get those visuals. You have to go to a website. You have to download the custom visual. You have to import it. Um, within Power BI Desktop, now we're going to enable you to launch the store and install custom visuals directly from the store in Power BI Desktop. So let's see how that one works. So here I have a bunch of custom visuals suggested for me. Hold on. What, what about the one? That's a, there's the one that we just saw, seen, the, the one from the UK National Trust with the, these timelines. It's beautiful with the circle, all the movie stuff. It's really, really cool. You'll not find it in the store. <laughs> not yet. But you'll find it in the store in a few weeks. So that will be one that you'll be able yep. to download or going to be available just a few weeks away. But we're going to try something else. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and use the word cloud visual. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to go ahead and update it right in line. And then you see here I have my word cloud. So we're going to start by looking at analysis of movie titles. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in the movie title. And I'm going to look at that by worldwide gross. So let's make this bigger so you guys can see it. So it turns out the most popular word in a movie title is the. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and remove those stop words. Um, we also have a big S for apostrophe S. So let's remove that one. Uh, and finally, let's rotate this so it's a little bit easier to read. So immediately, those trends jump out at you. You can see that sequels actually generate a lot of revenue for the movie industry. So now if we jump back to our report, you can see as I cross-highlight, these custom visuals are fully interactive. And now I can do even deeper analysis with these, with these custom visuals created by our community. Again, as I cross-highlight with other visuals, I can start to get new insights. Lionsgate, Mockingjay was really their big movie. Buena Vista, Star Wars really drove revenue for them. So again, this is just another way that the community is really driving innovation in our product and helping us to, to release new things month over month over month. So quick measures. Yeah, we want to release quick measures virtually every month because this is kind of a platform. We can just make it richer and richer and richer. Data bars, mm -hmm. the direct integration of custom visuals from the Office Store into the Power BI desktop. 
super cool, but that's just warm up. We're not going to get to the real heavy yep. hitters. Okay, so. All right, we've been talking about movies. Let's talk about actors for a minute. So I'm going to create a new page, an actor page. Um, so let's go ahead and add the name. I have this one pre-filtered already to Anna Kendrick. So what Kim is doing here is she creating a report for an actor. And we always kind of create reports for an entity, a report for a product, a report for a customer, a report for a movie, a report for a studio, a report for all sorts of things, right? And it's kind of uh, pretty easy, you know, she's, she's creating it in a few seconds. You can see it's pretty ugly, you can see that <laughs> in just a few seconds. But, uh, but we do it all the time. Now, this is a report for an actor, but if you want to change the actor, it's kind of a bit cumbersome, yeah, right? Yeah, you have to go filter and search. Um, but there's another way, there's a better way. Uh, so we're introducing the ability to turn pages into a drill-through page. Yeah. So what that means is with this yeah, 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 it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. You, can start, you can start to get excited about it because this yep. is going to be cool. So whenever I see an actor anywhere in my report and I right-click on that point in the chart, that bar in the bar chart, I can actually drill back to this page with the context passed through. Well, let's uh, see it in action. Yeah. So let, let's see how that one works. So I have this top actors page. So let's right click on Samuel L. Jackson. And now you see here in the right click menu, we now have a couple new options. And my actor page, drill to actor, is now there. So now when I click on that, I'm passed back to the page I just created, filtered by Samuel L. Jackson. Oh. By the way, there's another button on the top yep. there that we added, right? So it's when you create these pages, you get uh, a new button here. And so now I'm going to go back. And I'm going to jump back to the page. Let's do that one more time. Uh, let's go ahead and look at Stan Lee. Anybody know who Stan Lee is? <laughs> so uh, drill to actor. Uh, so turns out Stan Lee authored all the Marvel movies. Um, and he makes probably a five-minute cameo in each one. But he's been in $18 billion worth of movie. <laughs> Just an insight we learned uh, you know, using now, this feature. How many drill through pages can we have? You can make as many drill through pages as you want. And I have a couple others created already. So I'm going to go ahead and drill into my actor details page. This you is the same here. one, but much same better one. design. Not a, a little few bit seconds. prettier. Um, and so you can drill through to actors. You can drill through to movies. Um, you, you can, can even drill, drill into the different studios and kind of learn how, how all of their movies are doing so, across the So board. as we create those drill through pages, the whole system becomes this hypercard interconnected system. You can drill from anything to anything to anything endlessly, just become a brand new experience that you have in Power BI, all by s simply flipping that switch on that page that says, make it a drill through page, and just it. So yep. beautiful, so interactive. Woo. This has been, by the way, this has been one of, the, one of the top 10 requests from the community, oh, yeah. and we work really hard to make sure that it is going to be stellar. Yep. Now, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's look at something else. Yep. So we've been talking about actors. Let's keep talking about actors for a minute. I created this page where I can compare two different actors against each other. So I have my two favorites, George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Let's, uh, Amir, who do you I, want I'm, I'm old school. I'm going to go with Angelina Jolie. <laughs> and let's go with her nemesis. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> okay. So we just have a new pair on the screen. But if we ever want to go back to the previous pair, to Brad and George, um, it's kind of going to be annoying because we have to go and, again, reselect the drop down, the whole thing, all the clicks again. And how often do we have this situation where we want to go back to the previous set of filters that we had? Because we look at something and we just want to be able to return to them without having to go and remember everything. And this is where we introduce something new. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and open this bookmarks pane here. Um, let's pop this one open. So what the bookmarks allow us to do is save the state of our exploration as we're navigating through our report. And we can save it and really jump back and forth and start comparing and, and diving deeper into our analysis and coming back to what we started with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this one. I've got a few bookmarks saved already, so let's jump back to that, that first comparison, uh, George Clooney and Brad Pitt. And we can go ahead and look at a couple other pairs, uh, see which ones are generating more money across the movie industry. Uh, you know, we got some Star Wars characters, and of course, uh, comparing James Bonds. Yeah. So it's super cool, kind of, right? We always want to be able to remember where we were. It's actually remembered quite a lot of things. It's not just the filters. You remember what page you were on. It remembers quite a lot of things. 
And the reason why we are showing it to you in the keynote is, yes, it is a cool, nifty feature, but it's going, actually going to be a new building block, a very, very fundamental building block. These bookmarks, we can start doing some really, really cool things when we start using them in other combinations. So imagine what happens if you start chaining those bookmarks together. And Kim, uh, uh, Kim created some chain yep. here. So I've created a bunch of bookmarks already. Uh, and if you notice, I have a little play button here. So I'm going to string these bookmarks together to tell a story about my data. So I'm going to press play here. Uh, and now you see we get a couple controls down at the bottom to help navigate through our story. So I don't know if you know this, but Amir and I were huge Harry Potter fans. Uh, so today we're going to do an analysis about the Harry Potter movies and see which one's best. So here I have an overview of all my Harry Potter movies. We can look at worldwide gross. We can look at budget, director. Uh, but there's an interesting insight in this chart here. So we're looking at budget by worldwide gross. And you see an outlier on the lower right-hand side. So it turns out Harry Potter Deathly Hallows Part 2, while it was the best performing Harry Potter, it was one of the cheapest Harry Potters to make. Turns out they just stole all the budget from Part 1 and made the last movie. <laughs> so let's drill into Part 1. So Deathly Hallows Part 1, one of the most expensive Harry Potter movies to make, but it paid back for in dividends and worldwide gross. So Warner Brothers, they created all the Harry Potter movies. Uh, how are their franchises doing? What other movies did they make? Uh, is this the most expensive movie they've ever made? So let's jump into Warner Brothers. So now you see here I have a table uh, filtered by worldwide gross. Uh, look, they have Harry Potter. They have some superhero movies. The Lego movie is one of my favorites. Uh, but let's filter this by budget and start to see which were the most expensive movies. Oh man, those superhero movies are expensive to make. but. I'm really excited because, as we've seen these last couple weekends, Wonder Woman is crushing the box office, and we're going to see how this data changes in a couple weeks. So what you've seen here is by chaining those bookmarks, we have created a full story. We're bringing storytelling into Power BI. We're making Power BI into the PowerPoint for data. And that's super cool. And I just cannot wait to see what kind of stories you are going to create, because it's going to be amazing. Yep. But we have a few tricks here that we use that's actually a few new features that we require to make storytelling really shine. So let's look back at the yep. budget. So you'll notice here with this chart, uh, if I zoom in, we've added a new feature called Spotlight. This really allows you to emphasize this visual in the context of report, re your report and really have it pop out as you're telling that story. Another area we've added a couple other tricks is around show and hide. So I'm going to pop up in another pane called the Canvas pane. And you can see here I have a all the objects on my page. Uh, and if I zoom in, you see some of them have eyeballs next to them and some of them don't. Now watch as I switch the, the different uh, bookmarks. You can see I'm showing and hiding different objects as I go. So this really allows you to build up to your story, add annotations, and kind of add context as you're telling these bookmarks, as you're telling the story. So what do you think, guys? Storytelling in Power BI. But I said that those bookmarks, those bookmarks are fundamental object that we're going to use it in many other features as well. So let's check the same kind of bookmarks. The other feature that we had there was the show and hide and add to them the ability to have buttons activate bookmarks. And what do we have here, Kate? Yep. So I have a table of contents here. This is a great place for my users to start and, and kind of dive into an analysis, uh, knowing what, which paths would be best for them. So I've created a couple buttons here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this button into a link. So you'll see here, I have all my bookmarks that I've created already. I can go ahead and pick one. And now, when I click on this button, I can jump into another page in that report. And you can go back. And if I want, I can go back. Um, and then, even better, uh, I can use these buttons to change my exploration within the same page of the report. So uh, if I jump in right now, I'm looking at analysis by person. If I jump in and look at country, you can see I can switch out the visuals on the same page and let my users really switch out how they want to view the data. Uh, I, let's do that one more time, analysis by movie. And if I open up that canvas pane again, uh, you can see here, as I swap between these bookmarks, all I'm doing is showing and hiding different visuals uh, and letting the user kind of choose how they want to analyze their data. So this is pretty amazing, right? You just take those bookmarks. yeah. Think about what you can create here. 
You create table of content, menuing systems. You can create pages where the content is being dynamically changed based on the user preferences, the user selections, and it's all, not a single line of programming is required. Yep. You don't have to know properties. You don't have to assign properties. There are no scripts. All you do is capture the bookmark, this, and then bind it to the button. Just say, this button is going to trigger that bookmark, and you are done. Just like that, you're going to create this amazing set of systems. Thank you very much, Kim. Yep. That was wonderful. Thanks. You know, I, I just cannot wait to see what kind of amazing stories you're going to create, what kind of systems, creative systems, you're going to put together with all this dynamic content now available in Power BI. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. You know, Power BI is not just about visualizations. It's also about analytics. And uh, sometimes analytics can be a bit heavy duty. It's more for the bean counters, the people who have to do the math, the people who have to go and, uh, uh, and, and, and worry about the money. So. We're adding a, I want to show you another cool feature, small one that we're adding, but I think it's going to kind of open the few eyes here. Uh, let's go back to the demo machine here. And what you see here is uh, analysis of the production of a movie. And imagine that you are sitting in the back office, you're responsible for the budget, and this movie is going to be produced in Europe. Even though it's an American movie, it's going to be produced in Europe. So some of the expenses are going to be in dollars, and some of the expenses are going to be in euros. And as a person who is responsible for the budget, you know that you're going to be sensitive to the fluctuation of the currency exchange between the euro and the dollars. So right now, you made some working assumption that, that there is going to be some depreciation of oh, appreciation of 3% between the euro and the dollars. And that's kind of an assumption built into here to this formula that says it's going to be expected interest rate change is going to be 3%. But what if it's not going to be 3%? What if you want to do and you have to analyze other scenarios as well? And this is where we are introducing a new capability, which is going to be the what if parameters. And you can see here the button, the what if parameters. And I can go in very easily now and create a new what if parameter. I'm going to call it the USD to Euro change. And it's going to be a number between minus 10%, so up to 10% depreciation, and maximum of 10%. And I'm going to press OK. And that parameter just joined the screen. I'm going to format it a bit nicer so it can look a little bit like the other visuals on the screen. So we're going to go and uh, use the Format Painter to, form, to paint it. I think I did it the wrong way. Format Painter. And now, I don't know what it is. Oh, it is. It's good. So at this point, uh, we can go and, uh, and, and, well, we have the parameter. We have to bind it to the model. So I'm going to go and change this fixed uh, expected change from 3% to be the USD Euro 1 and press enter. And from this point on, my model is bound to this what if parameter. I can go start changing it and see how it's changing. I can see that if the, the, there's going to be appreciation, I'm going to go and my production cost in Europe, I'm going to go up. I can go play around to see what happens. It's going to depreciation. I'm going to save my money in the production and the expenses in Europe are going to go down. Uh, so very, very easily, you have this built-in ability to build those parameters, to bind them into the DAX formulas and just create this amazing new kind of analysis that your users can enjoy. But we can do even more than that. This is just a warm-up because we have the power of the machine to help us. Sometimes we have to do analysis. We have to discover things. And you know, some, it's kind of tedious. Yeah, something goes up. Why did it go up? Something dropped. Why did it drop? What's the difference between two things? Well, we do that. That's, we are analysts. We, we look at that. But we can really help the, the machine. We can really get the help of the machine. It can save us a lot of time. And this is where we are lucky to have some of the best scientists working for Microsoft. Um, really, the, the top of their field in the area of artificial intelligence. And I want to invite Pat Baumgartner, a product program manager from the team, to show us what we can do with a combination of BI and AI. Thank Thanks, you. Amir. All right, so I'm going to uh, clean up this report a little bit. And so what we've seen today is a lot of exploration where we've been clicking around and building charts and visuals. Uh, but let's take a look at how we can do something maybe a little bit better. So what I want to do is uh, pop this up, and you know I can see this trend here uh, that movie uh, worldwide movie revenue has been going up and up and up, but it kind of hit a peak here at 2012 and flattened out and has spiked up again recently. 
And, you know, as Amir said, we have amazing talent at Microsoft Research to add, you know, all these sophisticated algorithms and artificial intelligence to help us do analysis. You know, given that grab bag of amazing stuff, you know, what could we do with it? How can we imagine, you know, making everybody's analysis uh, tasks easier? And so we might do something like, you know, hey, this went up. Why can't I just right click here and say, you know, explain the increase? And so I just said, hey, explain the increase. And now I'm running uh, a bunch of very sophisticated algorithms to look across all the dimensionality of this model and see, hey, what's the best explanation for why this went up? And in this case, it picked the movie title. And um, it in. turns out that I'll zoom in. And we can see, you know, this was a, a year for blockbusters, right? You know, so all of a sudden we had the Star Wars, Jurassic World, Furious 7, Avengers, Minions, big, big movies that really moved the needle uh, uh, for uh, how much revenue was made in that year. But I can scroll down because it actually did this across a lot of dimensions and it ranked the answers. So I can see production location. It turns out that there was a big increase uh, in worldwide revenue from movies produced in the US. China went up, uh, Hong Kong went up, but you know, New Zealand and United Kingdom went down. Why do you think UK well, went up? Well, I think the previous year we had Harry Potter last one yeah, produced, yeah. right? Yeah, so there was that kind of change. So it makes sense, you know, so I can keep scrolling this. And you know, I can come down and I can see my studios. And, and this is a really pretty waterfall chart here. Uh, it's one of Mir's favorite. We'll talk about it in a second. But you know, we really took the task of saying, how can we apply this technology to helping a specific analysis scenario, like explaining an increase or a decrease? And so we didn't stop just one visual. We have other visuals we can look at here that help really get us into that in increase or decrease. And now the great thing is, anytime I see something I'm interested in, I just click this plus, and I can add it to my chart. Uh, and Amir gets really excited by this chart. Yeah, this is. Now, just think what happened here. Not only the system went automatically, looked at all the dimensionality, figured out what are the best explanation to explain that difference, the increase from one year to the other. It also created an amazing set of visualizations for you to choose from. And think about this one here. How many of you actually know how to create such a visualization with this kind of half checkered, you know, uh, diagonal green and red and, and the trend line in the middle? If you, even if you know how to create it, it's quite a lot of clicks and quite a lot of work. And just like that, the system created it for you. And it, it's regular visualization, yep. fully interactive. Still the same kind of thing so I can still interact with it and keep using it as part of my analysis. And you know, obviously we have lots of different gestures we're experimenting with and you know, explain the increase, explain the decrease, compare two things together. And so we can really dig into uh, building specific analysis paths using this technology. But let, let's, let's run that again, it was pretty cool. Um, so again, this is analyze, you know, if you didn't see it, the it, back, it, it, there's just explain the increase. Uh, I'll come out of zoom it here and say explain the increase. And let's run this again, you know, so now we're looking at 2015 to 2016 and this time the best explanation actually happened to be production location, right? Uh, and you know, so I see that the UK rebounded, went back up, uh, and I see, you know, China kept going up, you know, so it's just continuing its climb here across these periods. So let's add this one uh, and come out here. And let's go look at this waterfall chart. Can you, can you zoom again, in you know, Amir, we take all these I great love, notes I love from Amir. He's like getting into these visuals as we build them. Yeah, I love the waterfall chart. And this is not the waterfall chart that you have right now inside Power BI. This is an improved version of the waterfall chart. I want to just show you one cool feature that we have here. Look at that yellow bar. The yellow bar is actually aggregating all the other countries together. So you don't use it's gigantic without, you know, there could be hundreds of countries where movies are being produced. We just got the top five and everything else is aggregated to that yellow bar. And it's the system that AI decided which one should be aggregated and should be, which one should be uh, shown out there. So that's one of the features, a new waterfall chart yeah. coming into Power BI very soon. But we wanted to look at China there. Yeah, and the goal here is, again, to try to simplify the analysis process so anybody can kind of up-level their skill set. And again, you know, we're really focused on reducing clicks here. So how can we make it really, really fast uh, to get compelling information found? Um, and so actually, let's, let's explore China a little bit here. Now, I could actually even drill in. I could explain more insights here and kind of go recursively here. Uh, you guys are going to have an amazing time playing with this feature. Trust me, I just sit around exploring data all day now. Um, but I actually want to cross highlight and look at China. And so it's really interesting, this story of the production budget going up and up and up. And so here we can see, you know, the difference. So 2015, 2016 movies that had at least some production in China. Uh, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation had some production in China. Kung Fu Panda 3, my son Hudson and daughter Matilda just love that movie. Um, but then The Mermaid, we're all familiar with The Mermaid. How many of right? you have seen The Mermaid? No. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not the Mer yeah, you're, Mermaid. Yeah, you, you caught it. It's not actually the Little Mermaid. This is the, a different version. So let's use these other great features we've been playing with to drill to the movie details. 
And um, I haven't seen this yet. You can believe this is now on my to-do list. Uh, this is uh, this, you know, th the 13th uh, ranking movie of that year. Uh, this is a big year for movies, right? This is a recent movie. 131st all-time rank. The tagline for this is half fish, half human, 100% assassin. Mm -hmm. And so th this is on my, you know, top of my list. So this is a movie that made $553 million. It made $3 million in the U.S. That's the reason, you know, we haven't seen it yet, right? And, and what actually is a really interesting insight, and, and we only found it because we were playing with this AI, right? And this AI breaks down your hypotheses. You know, we would have had our own hypotheses for where we would have gone in the data. But instead, it was the AI finding something for us to pull us through. Uh, and, and this wasn't what we planned to demo, but it was just too good to pass up, right? You know, so, uh, you know, we found this and had to use it. Um, so anyway, I think we'll, 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 we'll tick up the estimated U.S. gross a little bit after, the, after this event here. Um, so let's, uh, so, you know, AI. It helps us discover insights. It also helps us understand or help the computer understand us. And we have made a lot of investment in the notion of natural language understanding. And we've been having this Q&A feature for a very long time. We actually integrated the feature directly into Windows 10 Cortana. So you can go in and st start typing natural language. And we are continuing to advance it. So Pat, take it. Yeah, and so, you know, we, we showed, uh, actually early on with Power BI, we started with natural language, and we wanted to make uh, people able to explore data with natural language, and we took that to Cortana. So you can actually ask for questions about your data uh, and get answers really, really quick. Um, and that's something we have today. So, you know, we saw earlier in the demo, we were talking about Parnell Aerospace, you know, and needing to change quote status. So I could, like, look up that information really quick in Cortana. But we're really excited to take that step even further. So now I can actually look for uh, just uh, uh, dashboard uh, as well. And so now I can just type the name of any dashboard, and nobody had to set anything up. There wasn't any enable something for Cortana or model your data. Now my dash, Cortana is just aware of all of my dashboards and apps automatically in Windows 10. So, you know, we've been talking about movie analysis. I have that dashboard. Uh, I can just type in the name of it. It opens up that dashboard just that fast, which is a really powerful way to think about how to get people to find information. We can also do neat, nice things. I work with a guy named Yaron. Uh, he's been helping me out a bunch. Uh, and, and you see, uh, he was sharing some stuff with me, so I can even find dashboards just by typing, you know, my coworker's name, and all of a sudden the stuff he shared with me starts popping up intelligently in Cortana based how much I use it. Uh, makes it fine and stuff really, really easy and very, very exciting. Um, but we can take NL uh, uh, even further. So I want to switch over to my uh, iPhone here. Great. So here I'm looking at the same dashboard, but on my phone. And you know, we took Q&A uh, down to the phone, so I can actually ask uh, natural language questions right on my phone. So I might want to look at the uh, estimated worldwide gross for movies. Maybe I want to see it by year, right? And so, I, you know, this is going to bring back a chart just like Q&A does, but we're doing something a little smarter now. We're actually running Quick Insights, the same algorithms you saw in desktop. We've had them in the service for a while. We're running that on the, the result of my question, and you can see it spotted an upward trend and just highlighted it for me automatically, right? So, you know, building that intelligence into everything we do. So we saw the analyst version. This is what, you know, an IW can do on the phone. So this looks like a very nice linear graph, but uh, what happens, what, what about China? Yeah, so let's say what... About China, right? So now let's just look at the, uh, I said production locations for China. So we can follow up on the conversation here and have a nice little conversation uh, with what's really becoming kind of an intelligent assistant. And you know, China, you see this huge spike upwards, right? You know, so there's the, the if you're producing movies in China, the worldwide revenue of this is going up, right? And it's this huge increase. But another really cool thing happened is again, we ran the inside algorithms that we're but, developing. But just before we go to the inside, I just, People just understand what's going on here. We now move from just having natural language to move, move to conversational natural language. So we can have follow-up questions on the previous question. We don't have to restate the question, show worldwide movies for China. We just, we knew what the question, previous question was, just refine it. What about China? And so the conversational yeah. natural language understanding is coming to Power BI. Again, in that same built-in AI. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, that same, same built-in AI that we were running in desktop, we're now running uh, integrated here as well. And so we saw a variety of insights that popped up, and we're listing them across the bottom. And uh, one of these really kind of stood out, um, and it's kind of interesting to see. So let's zoom in on this one. And so this is showing the original uh, language um, 
uh, of that the movies were produced in. And so even though we're seeing this huge spike in revenue for movies produced in China, they're still predominantly, with the exception of The Mermaid, predominantly you know, English language movies. And it really shows the impact of kind of the changing dynamics of, of entertainment. Now the great thing on these mobile devices here, um, I can annotate this. We can note that when I actually built this, da this data model we've been using for this entire demo had original misspelled in it. Uh, somebody pointed that out yesterday and I didn't have time to fix it. So uh, we can uh, 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 just be able to go ahead and, and annotate this, share it uh, just in line with uh, everything we do. And you know, we're really, really excited about the idea of taking AI and building it in in really practical and useful ways in all the experiences that you use. Everywhere from an analyst who uh, might be using desktop and, and wanting to find insights more quickly and speed up the process of building charts and everything they do, all the way to information workers on everything like a phone. Uh, we're really excited about the future uh, and, and what we have coming. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Pat. This was amazing.